In the last lecture, we implemented our server-side code so that when we are passing the correct username and password, it is authenticated correctly, and we are returned back with the token. That's great. Now we need to do the same exact thing, but using a React application. So let's go to the React application and zoom out a bit. You can see that in the React application, I have already created a very basic page. It consists of the login and the password. If I start typing in the username, I'm already populating the state. Let's go ahead and type in the password also. Perfect. So this looks like it's working, but currently we don't really have the code to make a request to our server. When we click the login button, it fires the handle login function. And inside that function, we will have to perform a request for login. The first thing we need is a URL. So let's go back to our login, get the URL. You can already see that I have updated our server. So now the server is actually running on 8080. Go ahead and perform a fetch request. We have the URL, we can pass in the URL. Since this is a post request, we have to specify the method for the request to be post. Apart from that, we do have to pass in some additional headers. So let's go ahead and pass in headers. And in this case, the headers that we're gonna be passing, let's go ahead and actually write it correctly right here. There we go. Will be content type application JSON. Perfect. We also need to pass in the body. The body is passed to the server in the form of a string or primitive types. So json.stringify. Now in this case, the good thing is that we have already put everything inside our credentials state. So we can simply pass in the credentials over here. And since the credentials is an object, it will be passed to the json.stringify and that object string representation will be passed across the wire. We will get back some sort of a response from the server. This will be a response promise. So we will go ahead and call json on it. Then we will get the actual result. And for now, we are just gonna go ahead and print out the result. If we get the result correctly, then we will take further action. Let's go back to our page, refresh it, and type the correct username. Make sure that your server is running. I'm gonna go ahead and perform the login request, and I get this weird error. What do you think this error is? So go ahead and pause the video and think about this error. You have seen this error many, many times. And a hint is that this error can be solved on the server side and not from the client side. Okay, so let's go back to our server. I'm gonna stop the server right now. The error is indicating that we have a violation of the course policy. Basically, our client is running on a different URL and our server is on the different URL. So they cannot really talk to each other like that. So in order for them to talk to each other, we will go ahead and install npm install cores. Next, we will jump onto the server and we will use cores as the middleware. So cores require the package that we just installed, which is also called cores. And then we will go ahead and put that package somewhere in the middleware, app.use, course. After making these changes, let's go ahead and restart our server and perform the request again. This time, 
let me actually go ahead and clear this up and perform the request. This time you can see that we are getting some sort of a response, not an error, but an actual good response from the server. This response is basically saying that the success is true, meaning you have been authenticated and the token is also available. If I go ahead and pass in some sort of wrong password like 123, I will get a different response telling me that we are not authenticated. Let's go ahead and pass in the correct one, which is password. Okay, so it looks like we are getting the response back. The response that we get back is in JSON format, which contains two different things, success as a property and the token. Let's go back to our app.js. So this result object is the one that we are printing out, which is an object which contains two properties. One of the property is success and the other one is token. We can check over here if result.success is equals to true, then we should be able to get the token. Token equals to result.token. If this whole thing is a result, then we can access the success and the token by simply saying result.success and result.token. That's exactly what we are saying. This is just a variable name result. You can call it anything you want. Once we have the token, we will put the token in local storage. The reason that we are putting the token in the local storage is that if we even close the browser and start the browser again, we should be able to access whatever we put in the local storage. If I just put it into some variable, like token on line number 29, and I restart my page, meaning refresh my page or refresh my browser, then the value of the token will be gone because it's just a variable. It will be reinitialized and the value will be eliminated. So how do we write to the local storage? Well, we simply go ahead and say local storage, which is already available as part of the JavaScript language, dot set item. Local storage work with providing the key and the value, and that's pretty much it. Both the key and the value have to be in string format. Key can be anything, so we can call it JSON web token, but you can call it anything you want. And whatever the value that you want to put in the token or in the local storage, which in this case is the token. Perfect. So this means that when the person is authenticated successfully, we will go ahead and put the token in local storage. Let's go ahead and run this application again with our new code. But wait, how do we even know that the value is inside the local storage? Let's go ahead and click on your Chrome browser and go to application. You can see in the application on the left pane, you will be able to see storage and under storage, you can see local storage. And in local storage, you can point to your own server. I already have something in the local storage like Batman. We can go ahead and remove that. Okay, now let's go ahead and press the login button. And there we go. Now you can see that if our authentication is successful, we will be able to get the token from the server. And using the code that we have written, we first check if the success is true, meaning if we are authenticated successfully, we get the token, and then we set the token in the JSON web token as a key and the value. Now, if I can even close my browser, run, restart my browser again, or even if I turn off and turn on the machine again, the token will still be there. This is great because we actually need the token to perform future requests. In the next lecture, we'll be looking at how we can send the token to the server from the client side and how the server can validate the token.